Our guest for today's episode is Arnab Mukherjee. He has graduated from Christ University Bangalore in IT engineering. He is working as a product designer and design systems manager. He has also previously worked at a SaaS company called Kubol and is the founder of the Colors app. I am Mayank Khandelwal and you are listening to whiteboard.fm. So hey Arnav, what's up? How's it going? All good, all good. You tell me. Good, good. How are you? So, good man. So, uh, yeah. how did you get into design? So, uh, it's a long story. Uh, I started out with design when I was in school itself. Like, uh, there was this thing in 2011, 2012 when I was, I think, probably giving my board exams or something. At that point of time, um, in class 10th, there was this thing called blog posts, right? Uh, where, you know, Google allows you to create your own blogs and stuff. At that point of time, I got to know about ki, ha, there's something called as blogging. So since then, in 11th and 12th, I started, there was this one of a friend who, who was like little techie and stuff. And he told me like, okay, you can start off blog and all those things. And, uh, and at that point of time, you basically, once you get into something like this, you get into all this community of blogging and all those things. And that part of time, you actually, uh, you know, explore a lot in those days, uh, keeping your studies aside. That was also one thing that got affected. But yeah, so at that part of time itself, I got to know about design in general, but design for logo design and all those things. Like these bloggers needed uh, logos and stuff they always wanted to be professional to look professional and all those things for that they were actually investing uh, you know money on logos and you know banners and all those things I was like this is something that works out for me right and that point of time also I was not using like Adobe software or anything there was this one software called Inkscape which was a vector based tool and it was open source so I was like let me just give it a try so from then uh, when the 11th was, you know, like my 11th was getting over, by then I was actually started, uh, you know, working for clients and all those things. Uh, since then, I was like, I just want to be somewhere. Like, I was not sure about doing engineering or anything, but I was sure that I have to be in some place where, you know, I just start working and it has to be designed. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. no, there's no limit about what kind of design or anything. It's just design. And for me, at that point, design was like, yeah, there's something that I'm beautifying and stuff and all those things. So, yeah, I think that's that's when I started designing in general. That's great, so, man. So how did that, uh, from wanting to get into design to what, uh, starting off your first project or like creating your first project? How was that like? What was the experience in creating your first project? Okay, so I remember, like, are you talking about the the first time when I heard about it and then... First time you made it? your own project, either a case study or created your own design project. Oh, okay, sure. So, I, so uh, by then, I was, like, when there were, like, a couple of these logo projects that I was doing, uh, you know, like, it was more around, like, first it was, like, okay, you give me... You know, like I was just understanding or talking to the clients. I was doing it for free and all these things. I was like, just give me those stuff and let me just make my name because that's how I was turning this into a business. I was not also looking at a process. Yeah, I'm designing something or anything to be very honest, but I was looking at key. Yeah, this is something that is making me money, which is at least, uh, you know, like I don't have to ask it from my parents or anything. I just right. making money out of, I might be making some random stuff. But there was no process as such. But then once that hit me, that, okay, I'm just doing some stuff and then, you know, uh, you know, colliding two shapes and all those things. It was actually making sense. But I was like, when, you know, you, these, uh, the future, like YouTube channels and all those things, when you, like, you know, so get into those things, uh basically tend to see, okay, there's this whole process of understanding the client has gone over there and then this is how they come up with all of these things. I was like, okay, this is something which is missing, right? And then then after that, uh, there was one of my client uh, who had this top-notch, you know, 
blog he was running at that point of time and he needed a mascot of his own so i was like no he needed a logo but i told him okay this is now they, from here i started suggesting ki what exactly you might can do different from just having a logo i told him ki probably you know what you look a little cool and he was bald and stuff and i was like you know what can you rather take it as ki you know like uh, probably a personal branding for yourself like as a blog you also take it as your personal branding so it's like how do we do how do we go about it i was like let's you know have a mascot of yours like you can just show that this blog is run by this mascot guy i was like okay this looks like a cool story right and at that part of time so this is how you know like i came up with ki ha so he had the school uh, you know like specs and stuff i made an outline of his and you know colored him and all those things i was like and he was like okay this is massively like he you so i used to post a lot of these things on facebook because most of these bloggers uh, were active over there so when he posted those things it was like okay this this is something new totally in the in the, in the blogging world at that part of time okay you know actually you can like put out your face with it without even this probably talking or something but it's just a cartoonish face which is also representing your brand so right. yeah so that was like the first process where i was trying to collaborate with him giving the right thing and actually unique at that point of time yeah right so probably this is like one of the stories this which is like still close to me and kind of i tell to everyone who is like talking to me in like how do i get started and stuff nice nice yeah. so what is the first project which you ever worked on when i was in college uh, i did my side project called colors which is still live now i have relaunched it last year but ideally it was launched in 2016 when i was in second or third year i probably would be in second year of my engineering uh, so i think the idea was to do something cool uh, the idea was to do something unique and also you know like the whole perspective of also i wanted to get out of my house to be an entrepreneur so what happened exactly like ki uh, you know like so when this whole thing was also about ki you know we wanted to do something cool and uh, we thought ki let's do a side project to understand how the softwares are developed and all those things yeah because at that point of time we had this entrepreneurial mindset that uh, you know we we should start something as a product or something like that and we were like let's let's start small or do some or just build a software that's it right it was basically a web app but we also wanted to have this thing ki okay how do we brand and all those things so we came up with this idea that why uh, why not you know like categorize colors in terms of you know uh, like google design and all those things like how you actually go and categorize around you know like languages and all those things so we thought right. uh let's say there's this topic there's this particular topic let's say you know like i'm not sure so how emotions was there at that point of time we thought ki what kind of target audience can be there and what color they would choose like for kids for you know males and females and all those kind of things right so we sorted out colors according to that and uh, uh that's what it was about uh when we first launched in 2016 so this is what we were trying because at that point of time most of these color palette generators were about you know putting random color to it and they would show you some color something like that right so that's how these color palette generators were there at that point of time we thought let's do something unique and also we wanted to you know work on visuals of our own and uh, a couple of our friends wanted to like you know uh, what do you call it? like uh, wanted to you know code and all those things so he, like there was this one guy called paul who who is like one of my friends he wanted to like you know start creating a backend or something which also becomes his first project for us it was like this is something that we can explore and we can work on the visuals how the color palette would look like it was very basic but the idea was to do the visuals and 
you know, like there was, again, like one of my partners till now, Rupak is was one of those uh, guy who who jumped into motion design at that point of time, and like these graphics, like you can just see right now, right? So these graphics, he started working on those things and improving ourselves. So we initiated this project to learn, but then uh, you know, like when we explored a lot about key how do we market now now once the product was already there now how do we market it so at that point we got to know okay this is something called as product hunt and um you know like uh we kind of posted it in the morning and then uh after that there was this huge response that came there was this so many visitors that were coming in the uh you know like coming to the site and stuff and we were like okay this what did we exactly make right it was just a simple idea and it was just unique in terms of like how we just were categorizing these colors and people were like, yeah. okay, they actually accepted this. Can and I show the colors outside as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. this one is the 2016 one and this is what it currently looks like, now, right? Yeah. So later on, we relaunched it in January and uh, uh, the idea is in this, in this product, the idea was to basically help people who were just looking into the you know a spectrum they just wanted to just go and they like the idea was to not put their brains on choosing the right color palette as in right. uh, there are certain combinations that work out there are certain combinations that doesn't work out right so what we did we went on to the color wheel and understood like how these you know, colors are made and they were like, we picked up these four categories like analogous, uh, which is one of the schemes where, you know, you take the five complementary colors in the same range and then you, you know, make a, a blend of it. Right. So, and same goes to try it, right. Where you get these complementary colors with a triangle in the, you know, like, uh, in the, in the color wheel and you pick up a color palette out of that yeah. now the ranges and the tints can be different but at least there's a method uh, of how do you how do you choose color right. so we went ahead and you know like we chose uh, things like in light uh, triad colors where we also explored on dark triad colors the idea was to solve for people who don't want to waste their time and just want a combination of colors which looked good um, and, uh, you know, like I've, I've, uh, gotten feedback from people who are developers and stuff, indie makers and all who don't want to like, you know, uh, they might also want to like make their own posters for their products and stuff. They don't want to uh, like, you know, waste their time on choosing the right colors and stuff, but they also need the variation. So we, what we did was using this method, we curated a lot of, lot of colors. And currently I think we have around 500 plus uh color palettes since the beginning right so that's what currently the state of the product right now it's a really well thought product it's really nice bro yeah that's Thanks. really nice also uh arnab uh, you worked at kubol right you interned at kubol yeah. and then you worked there full time as well for a while yes yeah yeah so how was how did you get into kubol like can you share your process uh sure let me just all right. So what? So before this, before Cubol, I was actually working at a company called Go for You. Uh, that was my fourth year. That the starting of the fourth year till um, the end of the like the start, the end of the third year and starting of the fourth year. Right. Like once that that semester, that odd semester that gets on, right? So I was working already working over there, and the right. idea was at that point of time was that. I was doing a lot of visual stuff over there and I wanted to switch and to a place where, you know, I get mentored as in, I was the only guy who was doing those stuff and how, you know, like these companies, uh, actually look at you and say, okay, okay the, at least the work is getting done. But for me, I wanted a mentor to, you know, lead me and like, I nice. just wanted to learn since like whatever is possible. I was just wanted to learn. Right. So, uh, the process was that there's actually, this is like a, a different story altogether. There's, there's no process as such, but there's this whole thing that happened and why I was, you know, got selected in Cubo. So, 
Um, so since I was looking for a change from the internship that I was doing with Bro for You, I thought that you know, like, so I used to post these, you know, like shorts, dribble shorts kind of thing on my Instagram. So one of my acquaintance actually saw this, and he was working at Cubot. I I was like, and then he, you know, like, you know, DM'd me that, okay, uh, we are looking for a product designer and all those things. But that product design role was actually for a full-time job. But at that point of time, I still had around six months of my uh, college left. And anyway, we are not supposed to go there, right? Uh, to join as a uh, full-time product designer. So uh, we started up on email where the portfolio actually got selected for the full-time role. I was like, great, maybe it's, it's the destiny. <laughs> and then I was like, and then, uh, you know, I, I looked at the profiles, like uh, my lead was Mayank, Ankita, who, who have been into the industry in the last 10 years and something. And like, they had some really, really good uh, profile. I was like, I needed to be there anyhow. Like I was behind that job post. I was not looking at anything because the, the mentorship that I could get over there I can just see it. I can feel it from the LinkedIn profile itself, right? Yeah. That's how I was looking at it. And uh, so the conversation started and they got to know that pro I'm, I'm still in college, right? So I told uh, my that, man, I let me just start out as a visual designer, probably with your company uh, as an intern, just, just, you know, like push me to at least start off as an intern and then probably we can see if I can get converted into a full-time, something like that, right? It was like, okay, sounds good. Uh, you, whatever, like, and I was not prepared with my portfolio or anything. He just said, whatever you have done till now, just put it in a presentation and uh, come up on a Zoom call at that, um, uh, come up on a Zoom call and we'll see if we can go ahead with something like that. So then that happened. I was in the office at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock at night, it was supposed to, like my interviews were supposed to start over there. And then I ran, whatever I did, I just went on to a place and then we started with the interview. The, like Mayank was looking for someone who can do visuals. And when you're in a particular B2C company, you have already done a lot of that, right? And for a enterprise company, that is something which is missing. And ideally what people say is enterprise product gets boring and all those things. That's, that's a different thing, but uh, even that product itself needed a lot of, you know, like visual acquaintance and, you know, a change since it was there from uh, probably seven, eight years in existence, but there's no change as such. Yeah. I didn't know about this. I figured it out later. Right. So at that point, when he was searching, he, was, he just wanted a person who, you know, like get started with some, to bring in some new look and feel and all those things. Uh, so I was like, okay, like it's just a point of getting into the company and start working with them under them. Right. So I was like, yeah, I was like, cool. So then the interview happened where he, where I was presenting him all those stuff, like whatever I have done. So there's, I think I've still put it somewhere here where I was just This is a project showing, for, with Bro for you. Bro for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is exactly what I've shown it to him. Like, you know, like, because they were looking for the flavor, like what kind of this person, like what exactly uh, kind of work that this guy does. Right? right. So I just presented him like, what was my, I don't you explain your project as well. The project sure, sure. Go go for you. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I'm uh, telling the story in terms of like, he just wanted to see that how exactly he's looking at those things. Right. Yeah. So I told him like pro for you was one of those companies we were, which were into hyperlocal market, right? Hyperlocal market as in, let's say you wanted to book a plumber. So you basically go to the app and, you know, book according to the timings and stuff like that. So, uh, that's what the company does. And the idea over there was to have a major revamp because since there were like a lot of competitors that were coming at that point of time in this zone. So even they were like, they started for two years, but there was no major revamp or anything like that. And they, they wanted that change to come in, in terms of the brand branding, as well as the UI. Uh, so, uh, those steps, right. At that point of time, we, 
the idea was to basically have a uniqueness in the brand yeah. the adoptability of the design culture uh which i kind of brought in to say ki, okay this is what we need right now like you know like right. we need some ways to prototype things first and then move on to something like that uh at that point of time we had adobe xd where we used to click through and those stuff right so you know like uh we started off with uh, building the wireframe with my cdo who was also looking at the product at that point of time and we were you know like doing first sketches like how exactly it should look and what are the changes that we might need over there so right we were lay layouting things like what are the major stuff over there and then uh you know like uh how these home pages are made where you basically have cross sell up sell you have the figma file for these uh, to share uh i don't have it right now because okay. this was done very well and it was actually done in photoshop sure no problem awesome. <laughs> so that's all so yeah we were you know like uh in the home page like there needs to be cross sell up sell in terms of our product the things that are coming from outside and all those things we were layering those stuff where we also didn't wanted a clutterness in the product but uh we were thinking about the you know like how we utilize spaces and all those things like very basic stuff with the guy right uh, uh then we moved on to like this was kind of like the intermediate page we used to call it as an intermediate page or the decision making page where you know the layout uh, has to itself explain ki why do you why you should book this uh you know like the category right it, this was let's say for the wedding photographer is the example over here where we showed ki uh, you know this this much of rating that we have got in as an overall rating for our services as a wedding product uh all the stuff we you know we went on to getting a club testimonials from other people and club it over here ki you know this is what the people are talking about right and then in general um we went ahead to have that uniqueness uh, right. for the brand uh, we went on to you know do a customized icon set uh, which not only solves the problem in the product but also helps anyone to recognize ki okay if there's this icon set probably it's about grow for you and yeah. then uh, this icons were also used for in the, the marketing segment and basically you create a system around it so that everyone in the company can also use it for their you know purposes and stuff right so and this is how the mobile versions look like and uh, you know the different pages that i have laid out so i was this is this is exactly what i have shown to uh, to get the internship at uh, cubol at first point right so yeah i can probably share the link after this yeah also uh, can you also share uh, the project the projects you worked on at uh, kubol yeah sure yeah uh, okay. so so majorly uh, so when i was getting you know like hired and stuff yeah we uh, so at that point of time when the conversation went ahead and he started explaining like what exactly uh that we are looking for right so right. he was like we needed a library kind of thing and back in my head it was about like okay maybe it's talking about something like bootstrap or you know a, a repeated component library and stuff we didn't discuss it as a design system thing or something like that at that point of time this is right. a conversation when we were at 2017 yeah right and when you we were getting when i was getting hired it was just about talking ki there should be a component library right. which serves the purpose of uh, a system and a system in the sense that the whole company uses this whole stuff like uses the same thing and you know bring up a process in uh, you know the way we build the product right right so like the the major product and ideally which uh which i talked a lot about is the is the cubol design system that i actually did uh in my tenure of internship like at in internship i was making the base of it and then after that when i was into the product design role uh i actually used this base and evolved it in a state where uh the 
three pillars of the company was using this. The three yeah. pillars were one, the product team, the engineering team, and also was the marketing team, right? So how do we like scale? Probably we would have not like gone to a scale for these three pillars, but at least the product team and the engineering team was there, right? right. It was about the vision that we saw, ki, how does this design system and what does this design system solve, right? So, uh, you know what, so the thing, so with probably I'll show you, okay. So the, these are like a couple of articles there where I've shared like as part one, part two and part three, where right. I've shared exactly what are the steps that we took, right? So in part one, we ideally talk about what is the thing that was going at yeah. that point of time with the UI, right? And this was a pretty old, uh, like this was like around two years back when I was getting hired at that point of time, the UI looked something like this. Right. And, we, and there was this, uh, and there were like so many teams uh, divided and they were actually working on individual products. Now as designers, we wanted to have that consistency around it and uh, all those things. So we thought, to level it up and you know like think of it as a ui stack which where we control uh how does it how does the behavior function how does uh, a, a, a designer should look at it how does a developer should look at it and create a common language around it right, right. this was this whole idea that i basically talked about in the first part and how did we and and the process where we were you know uh, talking about automatic automat automating the system in terms of for the designers as well as the engineers right yeah so what the idea was to have a design system where uh, where the the designers now could be able to you know pull out the basics of the elements like the the atomic level elements has to be this but on top of it you do like how you can use these components and you know make a page layout out of it right? right so this was the whole idea that these people like our people in the design should uh, design team should think more on the user experience and rest of it we, are, we have already automated it so none of them needs to go to a component and think of key okay uh, this is how the form should be this is the pixel size and all those things this is all automated and every time anyone is using a form will be the same right. right so that was the first day but before that since this was the right time we were also looking for a new ui language we thought that let's just get it started and think of it as a whole ui revamp altogether and we build a build a system after that like once we have that language and we build the whole system around that language right so the first thought was to basically look at the companies like how do you want to be like what are the different things right this is more of a mood boarding exercise where this whole like our whole team sat down and you know like it's just copy pasting stuff like how do we envision those things and i wrote about the design cycle of how what are the critical pages uh what are the you know like what do you call like the decision making pages and stuff like that where where is uh, where exactly the page layouts should look equally uh, you know like and and ideally we were also looking for interface elements in the sense that at least these basic things should be right and in the qa cycle we don't have to go and think about okay, okay if the button is right or not if the radio buttons are right or not like the basic elements should be there right so that's great, th bro. That's like the project is really, really deep, and anyone who wants to read can check it up on Medium, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, of course. can you tell us something right. more about how the design team at Kubol is? Okay, sure. So uh, at that point of time, we were four people. Yeah, and uh, we had our head of design, Mayan Kumar, who was in US. Yeah, um, we had an India lead. Uh, uh, called Ankita. Ankita is like, she is now UX leader at Salesforce. And there was this one of my colleagues called uh, Girish. Uh, he was also a UX designer. And um, then I was there. So we ideally have 
so we were dealing as a company we were dealing with uh four personas data scientist data analyst data engineer and uh, data admins so these four personas was ideally distributed on these four people right. that's how it is right and uh, i was ideally looking at the design system plus couple of other projects which uh, which were from data analysts and also helping out with girish to you know build up the product for data engineering and stuff right so who was your mentor during the, this project sorry so who was your mentor during this project i didn't get you yeah mayank was there and ankita was the major like they were the people who actually mentored me and teached most of the stuff nice so how's the feedback how does the back and forth go how does it start from a concept to like you mm-hmm. mentioned in your case study right to how does the feedback work and lead to the final product okay cool so uh, the best part about working at cubol was that uh, they used to give a lot of leverage to me to basically go and explore first like let's say there is this problem statement coming in uh, and uh they would ask me to go and research on these things and ideally understand what exactly the thing might need right so we usually used to have this team meetings and also one on one every week that is that has to be there so this whole week i was supposed to explore like do stuff uh talk to the product managers uh, on my own first and then uh once we have this one on ones and stuff they kind of give me the direction and this one on one is not just about a one hour thing or something in those one on one they would rigorously talk about like this is going wrong or this is going right you might need to take a different path altogether and that's how the feedback loop was all about right because since uh, the product itself was pretty complex like i would say some of the part of the products itself took me like around one year to understand like okay this is how it was like this is what it meant right and since you are into design also you might not have those concepts of data engineering data systems guy all together right so that's how the you know the feedback used to be and then on in general every time uh, ankita was already there or to mentor on each point of time when i'm already stuck ki okay this is something that is coming from the engineering point of view but this is also something that is coming from the product point of view right yeah so now how do you converge all of this and also uh, you being the advocate of the user how do you keep that first and then merge all of this right because that's the most important part also yeah. can you show your portfolio or not and tell us more of how did you build it or what was your thought process while building it Cool. I kind of don't have a complete portfolio or anything. Um, there's something which is light right now, but uh, I usually tend to send people uh, different links or stuff like that. Like I just talk about uh, you know colors, like what is the impact that I've made yeah. in those things, right? By sending out links and stuff, right? Uh, these are the couple of things that I do uh, from last one year. that i made those threads of how did we impacted on all those things uh that's how my portfolio right now i, I don't have anything as such that has a complete thing but i kind of have these you know uh documents that i've written yeah. when i do or when i work i kind of write them since the beginning uh from last one year i have take the decision that whatever i am doing just let's just have things written over there right yeah. so this was one of the project at cubol where we were doing a user engagement through emails as in uh, the transactional emails which are like system generated and stuff so what i did was you know just just see what goes in the industry what is the loophole right now and what do we need to do as a mature you know a saas product as such so right now what was happening was that the open rates from the transactional email was just 0.02% like people used to just click once and coming to the product was just 0.02 even though we were sending a lot of emails at one point of time right ideally in in any saas average saas product there's around at least 2.2% of clicks 
yeah. to turn to and the transaction email. That's how it works, right? So I used to write the scope and uh, you know like what kind of things that we need, uh, what kind of emails that we're going to impact now, and how do we make a loop as in retention and all the stuff. Yeah. So, um, and then you know like the idea was to come out from that those templates where right now Cubal was doing like okay. Just send it as as a normal email where the links were not highlighted or there was no certain CTAs that were highlighted at that point of time. Like as in, it was just random or not even random. It's just a text message where they we just used to tell you about the system and you need to search for the link in the whole paragraph that where you need to click. So those things that we already identified and it was like okay, we need some clear CTAs around it. And what are the engagements that we can do? The copy that we wanted to write, uh, a new voice and tone that you're working on, and all those things. So I used to write all of this, uh, like the measuring success and stuff. Um, this was like how I said we need to have some kind of metrics going around since the first day of uh, when you're doing the design, right? So I used to sit with my product manager, and he used to help me out with. Okay, okay. What are the right things to look at when you're working on an email project overall, and what is the uh, like right measurements that or the metrics that you're looking for, the the problem that you're solving. Now there are two kind of metrics that can happen, right? So this is how you I used to write, right? And like yeah, uh, okay. So. So now, uh, what I did in this project was basically uh, also educate the rest of the company that what exactly is going outside, right? So first is was to understand what kind of categories that goes in a particular SaaS product or enterprise product or whatever, right? So under the I basically took out these categories like activation emails, welcome to onboarding messages. Then we had uh, activity notifications, report and dashboards. Like these are the uh, category of emails that is basically used by the industry right now, right? As in any SaaS product or any enterprise product, to have engagement, to have retention, and all those things, right? Like finish current task and slash almost done email, or you know next steps that you need to do. So there's a lot of back and forth that was going over here. So these. Also had a category in itself where we categorize these, uh, you know, uh, emails into a subcategory again. So new right. user activity engagement, then in product activity engagement. Then this was this whole thing when the user is not coming back, you actually send out an email. Yo, oh, okay, we are missing you or something like that, right? So all those emails, how does this come up as a system, right? right. So. uh let's so i created a basic flow chart where what how does the ideal world would look like when uh you know the the user is coming in for the first time and there's a trial period going on so at that point of time how would it, how it would look like right so this was like you know you get an activation email and then you onboard him explain him like you know these are the links that you can go through these are a couple of you know tutorials that you can check to set up all of this and uh, you know like after that once you have run couple of queries now what you can do uh, so all those retention stuff that can go so let's say if if the user has turned as a customer let's say we he has done with the third 30 day trial period now what are the other next steps that you can do other than that if he doesn't come and if, if the user doesn't come and you know basically you need to go back and throw him an email to come back and basically this is what you can do all the stuff basically educating them from the right point of time the next point was since there was this huge system of transactional email which was already built uh how does the what does the current state look like right now right so there were a couple of copies uh of emails that was going to the team as well as to the user so these were like a uh, couple of emails that were already going so again categorizing them at one place uh, what are the activity notifications that were that, that were going and all those things right uh, now what are the loopholes where we can push in these categories let's say the milestone emails uh, after these this like let's say execution of a command for the first time when you do after that you commented on a query 
now there's this milestone that you have achieved right you have done all of this you have used this this part of the system and now you have sent another milestone email uh, basically where you're cheering up the user ki okay you know what you are actually exploring the product right so out of which you know like this is this is how i kind of portrayed the whole uh, system since to make them understand that what exactly the system looks like right now and keeping this as a base how do we do or how do we go next about it so the next point was since we had you know like a uh, a solid design system that has come up then we thought like this is the right time to actually uh, you know talk about the product voice and tone across the board like from the marketing segment to how the internally how the product would talk and all those things right so i went ahead and so this is a club of two product projects one was picking up the voice and tone as well as the email yeah. right so in this basically we what i ideally i'll not get to through the whole thing but ideally the idea was to basically come up as a value or having a value proposition about what cubol does yeah uh, and, and how does our essays talk to uh, different people and all those things what we did we just understood what are the adjectives that we can pick up as a brand that is like how we have talked about it as helpful positive confident informative and experience right uh, and what are the guidelines that we can uh, use when we are talking about anything in the company it has to be simple it has to be human it has to be considered or contextual in sense and rest of it was just ui guidelines that we can use so once we were done with this as a base text uh, we went ahead and we started making changes on uh, the email that looked something like this like how a general email actually looks like right now to something you know a uh, more elaborative and what does uh, email could look like right as in a welcome gesture to having concise uh, you know a uh, ctas at right point of time they, like the user just needs to go and click on it that's it that's the whole task over there but we also need to make sure that we are crisp enough to make him understand that what what are what exactly this email is all about right hey. so yeah so these were like couple of emails that got redesigned and all those things so i think that's the whole process of the whole product project in this case what are your top 3 learnings from and your entire experience at kubol okay so top 3 learnings are um, probably the first thing is to think a lot think in terms of flows think in terms of who is the like you are building the product behind the screen like the guy who is sitting behind the screen there's the right. human behind sitting sitting over there right what exactly he needs like understand the core problem right that's that's the first thing then uh, you know it's very important to have quality in your product and the way you're conveying your messages to like mm-hmm. you are selling this to a product manager over there the stakeholders uh, sometimes you are the one who is taking a decision and actually pushing it to the engineering or a product guy make sure there's enough reasoning around why do you did this right? right because uh sometimes they might be thinking that okay this is what is the right way to go but when you put users up and how you are actually educating them right and then you make a decision make sure you have those backing with you to explain uh this is the reason why why it is supposed to be done like that right so this is the second the third is uh not sure i mean this these two itself has this own whole universe in it right that's true think, that's a lot in, but, that's a lot in itself as yeah. well what are some exactly. of the things you are excited about right now that's going on currently in the design industry all right so personally what i am interested in uh, right now is um, you know hardcore accessibility stuff like sometimes uh accessibility in the sense where you build a product for completely let's say uh people who are blind or with low vision right and how do you embed even like let's say you don't have to change your product altogether but in that product itself how do you make sure 
using the technology that your OS is already giving to you are people who are, uh, you know, like living their life on technology without even looking at the screen. Right. Like imagine this, right? This is something that right now and currently I'm invested in. Like I have been reading a lot of things. For for me, at that point of time, since then, since I'm a design system guy, I kind of know about accessibility as the surface, like where these things come as uh, WCAG guidelines and what is the right thing to use, uh, do not use shapes and all those things, like stuff like that. But I'm going beyond that. Probably cognitive, you know, like cognitive. Yeah, what, uh, these are some of the things that you're learning currently. Yes, exactly. What are more things that you're learning along with cognitive learning? Yeah, so learning, I think it's just mostly on the accessibility part. I am giving a lot of time for myself to be there. The second is probably looking out for a, uh, or building a product altogether, like how I have this crazy, uh, you know, ideas about building side projects and stuff. So probably that's the next thing that I'm looking at. What is the next big thing that I can build? for the community or probably, probably like how I did it for the design industry, like creating this colors.com and all those things. Um, that's the second thing that I'm looking at right now. And apart from that, uh, research is one of the things that I'm, uh, you know, into like talking to the researchers and stuff, key, how exactly your process is probably not in that extent, but I kind of, revolve around them and just keep talking, keep talking, to keep talking about what, what are the process that you can, you know, work upon and all those things. So, yeah. Nice man. Also, yeah. what kind of stuff do you see yourself doing in the next, within the next five years? Damn. <laughs> five years. Okay. Uh, what is your vision for yourself or for the stuff that you're going to be doing in the next five years? Yeah. I, I always wanted to be, an entrepreneur and probably down the line five years probably building a SaaS product and uh, I was totally invested on to understanding the sad SaaS industry altogether or probably an indie hacker or something like that uh, let's see I mean down the line I'm pretty sure I will be you know running a SaaS product altogether because uh, since I was doing from last one year I was invested on colors and at that point of time, I have dipped into SaaS products altogether. So in down the line, five years, for sure, a SaaS product, that's it. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. What advice yeah. would you give to someone who wants to get started in design right now? Okay. So a couple of them, like what I have seen is that some people try to, you know, open up or try to do fake projects and stuff like that, which is, which is kind of also shows, okay, okay, this is the process that it took and probably it might not be a real uh, world problem, but you are actually, you know, looking at, uh, to build a portfolio. Yeah. I feel that don't do it just for the sake of a portfolio, but I would rather, uh, look at it as probably doing a side project or something where, you did or you basically lived a whole life cycle of a product and that's life. That's what people are using. Probably if it is not you, if the people is, if, if the people are not using or there's no response over there, maybe there's some things that you need to try differently. Right? So I think prob rather than uh, doing or making a projects just for the sake of it, I would rather tell them if you are in college or something like that, invest on yourself build products, right? There's, there's n number of tutorials out there to uh, how to code, how to market, um, you know, how to uh, probably, you know, market your things in community, all the yeah. stuff. That's all out there. Let's not, let's not just comprise ourselves being designers to do UI stuff and get a job. Rather, sell yourself that I can look at the product and as an end to end goal, right? As in imagine uh, like I have been using multiple products to run one product, right? Let's say MailChimp or, you know, like I, I also code. So 
now i kind of have that engineering background also ki let's say in real world if i go in my company i can actually talk to the developer in terms of how exactly they look at the code you have better conversation over there whereas uh, since you are also marketing your product you also can go and understand from the marketing team like why exactly what what's happening so you have that same tone to talk about you have better conversations when you actually do things by your own sell yourself as a product guy altogether right not as i'm not talking about as a product manager or something but i'm talking in terms of designer is it who look at things more broadly more understanding how it is going out there uh your your end product how is it going out there right so so that you have this whole loop which is like uh, it's not just design which is helping the company to grow it's the different set of things a uh, set of people set of departments which help a company to grow right so understand all of it by doing a side project so that you can bring a lot of other things in the on the on the table so the best thing to go about it is doing a side project it can be anything just even if you replicate it you make a competitor out of it just do it there there's no earning or anything because at that point of time probably you would be you know getting money out of uh from the parents and stuff just just live that life of how uh, a product runs like see how it goes to different people how people talk about it and uh, that would be a different rush altogether i'm pretty sure so i think invest on yourself as on the side projects that will give a broader knowledge to you for rest of your life that's great advice man <laughs> also what Thanks. advice would you wish you would have gotten when you were starting off hmm someone could have just told me that uh there's always a not always a process but there has to be something uh that goes behind all of this right as in yeah. still now sometimes i get excited and you know sit at the board on the sketch or something like that but then you know the maturity when that hits to you and you like get out of it take out your pen and paper and think think thoroughly think every age cases because you doing a incomplete job doesn't make sense it will be a chaos in the later stage of the product but you really need to think a lot uh even before you start anything so probably this is something when i was doing things alone at pro for you i was an intern over there and like there was this whole uh things were already there and i was just making things ki okay this has to be look good this is how it is supposed to be but you might also not know how the impacts are right and also a advice that how you can think of it as design having metrics from day one right you also need to think ki what impact in terms of numbers that i can make also right because at the end of the day you need to understand okay how did this impact exactly did it make a change how do you make a loop model around it right so i think these were the things which i got to know later i would have done it since the beginning i would have given this knowledge if i would have had this knowledge i would have used it in the time of when i was at pro for you right so probably these are the advices that someone would have given to me <laughs> that's really great stuff man actually the one one reason why i started colors was uh, the first time i meeting uh, i met uh, abhinav and he was like to started i was like okay let me just go back to home and and actually i started off with the side project it did well So, yeah yeah <laughs> nice man awesome you remember yeah yeah i do we met at starbucks yeah yeah exactly thanks for into being there for the interview can't wait for everyone else to listen to this yeah pleasure is of mine <laughs> great bro thanks for listening to this episode and i hope you liked it to check out other episodes and clips from the interview subscribe to the whiteboard.fm youtube channel feel free to share your favorite parts of the interview and don't forget to tag us this podcast is a part of the 10k designers network 
you can check out other projects on 10kdesigners.com.